he can no longer be Prime Minister. You can't afford him anymore. Well, I don't agree with that analysis. I think Boris Johnson should, of course, remain as our Prime Minister. And I'll tell you why. It's precisely for the conversation we were just having now. It was the Prime Minister that made that call about having the mass booster programme, which has ensured we're getting through the worst Omicron. At the same time, he made the call, despite the huge pressure, and you may have remembered this, I recall it, around having a further lockdown in the face of that Omicron variant. He made the right call and has meant that we've managed to have the most open economy in Europe and the most vaxxed economy in Europe, the two are linked together. And I think when it comes to those big calls, he's made the right call. Now, of course, I don't diminish for a second that the kind of events that we've seen were totally wrong. I was angered by them. My constituents were angered by them. The whole country was angered by them. And it's absolutely right, the Prime Minister said, we'll get to the bottom of them. And I'll tell you that when he responds to the House of Commons, as he's committed to doing so, he will make sure that we address the kind of culture that has allowed that to happen in the first place. It's going to have to be a pretty dramatic response. I mean, <laughs> at the very least, uh, your job is to get the Conservative Party back into government. You've turned an 80-seat majority two years ago into what is now a consistent 10% deficit in the polls, and that is down to Mr Johnson. He is the obstacle to your doing your job? Well, we all know that opinion polls vary. What matters to me well, is that what matters, very much what, the matters to the British, what matters to the British people is, first of all, they rightly expect us to get a grip of this situation. It was totally wrong, the, the events that happened. It's absolutely right the Prime Minister's apologised and he will need to take further steps and he will take those further steps when he makes a statement to the House of Commons. But it is also the case that we need to address not just COVID, and thank goodness we're making progress as we come out of Omicron, but also on the consequences of COVID, whether that's clearing the NHS backlog or whether that's rebuilding the economy. We need that kind of leadership to get us through it. And that's what people expect. Of course, we take these things seriously and we must address them, but we must also address the consequences